episode 7, episode 7, it's episode 7 of the Gran Turismo's mm. podcast. How you doing, Gran oh, Turismo? Yeah. I'm doing alright. How's how's my uh, my Mario doing over there? Oh, your Mario's hopping along, bouncing on mushroom caps, and swimming through pipes, as I always do. <laughs> Excellent. And I'm having a, a lot of fun lately. It's summertime. Work's been slowing down. It's getting extremely hot in Las Vegas. Typical stuff. What about you? Just uh, same old, same old. I'm uh, getting ready for a wedding in a month. Uh, Congrats. Got about everything ready to go. Um, six months into house ownership. Congrats, congrats. Thank you. Checking um, off all the boxes. Yeah, it's all right. You know, I've got uh, I've got two open beers next to me. I'm ready for this. Beautiful. That's what I like to hear. I have coffee and tears that I've been shedding. <laughs> um, Wipe you than crying. No, no, sad Eddie. No. <laughs> no. Nah. Well, first part. It's not really sad news, but unfortunately, North America is the fourth out of the uh, three top manufacturers, or it's four out of five in terms of global uh, manufacturer battle that's been going down. Uh, fortunately, we were able to help Jaguar secure eighth place, I think, if I remember correctly, which is great because last year Jaguar was just like on the bubble, and I think we all kicked ass together. But uh, not going to go to New York. I was number one a Jaguar driver. Uh, Jamal also was really close, like could have been easily the number one, but mm -hmm. he, he just he had a, two great scores and then just needed that one other uh, decent score to get him up there, but. It was a pleasure training with him and doing all that, and so now it's uh, onwards and upwards. Uh, Pierre, my teammate, uh, people may know him more as RC Snake, he is going to New York, is the third ranked region uh, from France, and then in Oceania, our buddy Ken Omos is, you know, just super impressive, he's going, and I think number one, it will be Vinicius, the almighty uh, Hell's Fire. Oh, excellent. So pretty awesome yeah man. and but that's the jaguar kind of brief but i was it was pretty insane tracking how uh porsche the battle for supremacy in the porsche kind of stable went between lester and yourself yeah it was tough i mean um lester a very consistent finisher and you know certainly no slouch so no. um yeah i uh I think that I could have overtaken him um, if I had committed fewer errors mid-season. There was a, there were a couple of qualifying opportunities I kind of binned that would have gotten me like 2,600 point scores that were instead 24, 2,300. And um, yeah, what can you say? Just uh, wasn't quite enough. Um, almost did it in the last round, uh, this last one at Lago Maggiore. But uh, yeah. both Windfire and Def Sun, um, they pulled out like a second in front of me each, and uh, I couldn't reel them in. I, I didn't lose touch with them, but neither of them made any mistakes. So um, I finished third in that race and was like 170 points off of Leicester. If I had finished second, I think I would have beaten him for points. Um, that, that's the way it goes, you know? So close, man. And that was such a fun battle to watch, though. I really appreciated you guys taking that uh, race to the last, very last possible <laughs> slot and uh, kind of duking it out for uh, honorary court sort of, you know, because it, it, there was stuff at stake in the last, in the second to last round, but this, the last one was just pretty much, by then you couldn't, you couldn't have beaten them, right? So it was just kind of like having a, a slap fight for pretty much bragging rights, which was fun. It was cool to watch. It was it was cool. Um, shot myself in the foot with a penalty midway through the race. Um, Luckily, it was only a point five. I was right behind you guys the whole time. If if you, it was an insane battle. I highly recommend checking out uh, Tristan's onboard uh, road beef on YouTube. It's R O A D B E E E E E E E F. No, there's just two E's and then an F. Road beef. He has a really good onboard <laughs> of that battle. I'm a, I'm a long stick of man meat. That's why there's so many E's in beef. Tender, juicy, and ready for the... Uh, let's keep PG-13 <laughs> today. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, I, saw, I had a pretty 
Man, to be honest, I'll have to say it here, I only practiced like 45 minutes before slot one, and I got a 53.9 in qualifying, and it made me really happy because I was like, wow, the Jag has pace with these new physics. <laughs> these ridiculous uh, physics. These ridiculous physics that uh, Defson really hates, and uh, and I think it's because he came from Forza. He he got away from Forza, came in the GT. He liked the community. The physics were you know good and all that, refreshing a little bit and a little more difficult than Forza. And then we're back to like a Forza kind of feel, which is weird, understeery, um, kind of on rails feeling somewhat with when it comes to putting the power down. But when the tires wear, it does kind of you know go. The snap over steer is de over steer is definitely a thing. Totally, it's it feels like the cars have uh, very soft sway bars now. Like it, it, once you get that over steer with the worn tires, the car does not want to come back like it used to. If you if you fed in a little opposite lock and a little bit of throttle to push the weight to the back, instead of you know straightening out, instead it just kind of stays in the slide. It's. Uh, it's too early yeah. for me to say if it's more realistic or not, but I'm leaning towards not. Right, yeah. Um, I had a big drift moment going into that. So this is Maggiore. Uh, we're talking about the last round of the Manufacturer Series. And I'm sorry if all we talk about is Manufacturer, but it really is this year the only, um, the only possibility for people like us to get in. Uh, not people like us. You know what? We're better than that, but... We just don't want to do nations because it's really tough. There's only two slots per yeah. nation, and you have to be top five, and it's just like, ugh. So I'd rather give it a, more of a focused go at manufacturer. So that's why we're only talking, talking manufacturer. And it's a lot of fun. I found it last year I didn't do it at all, hardly. Mm -hmm. But this year I'm all about it, and I think it's super fun. So Yeah. Well, last year we had, what was it, like 10 Americans or uh, USA residents were allowed, and now it's like three or something yeah it's a lot fewer a two i think two per two. country in north america yeah yeah uh, so uh windfire and dodge lamb um i think are the two top americans i want to say and and also like stagger and there's originals those are going to be real tough guys to beat for nations oh i think anthony uh is or and FT Ant. yeah but, yeah can't forget that. he's super impressive uh like he just, it's funny because every time like it was funny watching the Nurburgring race because I feel like he kind of had a little bit of a sl not a slump but like he wasn't as interested in the middle of the season he had a strong beginning and a strong end mm -hmm. but in the middle of the season he was making some weird errors like in Nurburgring he uh, forgot to put um, he forgot to switch from hard to medium tires I think it was yeah so he, had, <laughs> so he like blasted away and then had to take a pit stop then he did something else kind of aloofy in the next race I forgot what it was but uh, yeah, super strong and doing kicking ass in the Mercedes. He's going. To, he's one of the guys going to New York uh, mm -hmm. to compete in World Tour there. Um, but yeah, the physics. Uh, I had a big moment going into Maggiore turn. Was it four? The right hander, the elbow, the, the you know the deep kind of. It's like a banking elbow. The uh, after the sort of the back straight. Yeah, after Where the first sector finishes. If, if you brake incorrectly, you can put wheels off because it's like a curved braking into like a compression up. Oh, right. yeah, man. And speaking of that braking, uh, that braking zone, watching Daniel uh, Dodge Lamb going into it, he was so close to the edge. It was, usually I like to be close to the edge, but, whoa, he was scaring me. Right. But, yeah, that was a fight. It was, uh, who, was it, who started on pole on that one? Was it Lamb? Which, or was uh, it you? Our, in the Lester's. final slot, yeah. Lester did. Lester, right. Yeah. And then um, you were second, and he and Lam was third, right? Yes. And, before, and I was... You were fourth. And I was then fourth. Tim Lore, and then Hendrix, and then Rich, uh, and then Lightning, and behind that, I, I can't remember. Right. But you had three pretty... Like, you were right up there, the whole all three slots. Yeah. I mean, dude, I've been... Thank you. Um... I've, I've been trying really hard to, uh, I, I feel like that reflects well, um, maybe the first kind of positive result after a lot of soul searching and, and attitude adjustment. Um, this whole season I've had issues with uh, <laughs> rage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, maybe I've been watching too much of uh, Key's stream, but right? um, I've not been able to handle even like the smallest of you know, wheels off or erroneous penalty or car blocking qualifying or something like that. 
um, it's just sends me off the rails and uh, it's I found it difficult to just exhale and get the adrenaline shakes to quit because it was only compounding itself you know the more pissed off I'd get the worse I would drive even though you, you think you're going faster and you're actually going slower it's you, you got to go slower to go faster you got to calm down and you know, yeah. only then will you be able to string corners together and, and find those extra few tents. So. Yeah, I, f- I find that really interesting. I think this preseason provided a great palate cleanser for a lot of people. Um, I would definitely say that's the case for me, and it seems like that's it was a good, um, very, uh, uh, it was something, yeah, it was a great learning experience and um, also a confidence booster to let you know that you're, super you're more than able to be consistently top three fighting for wins and everything and uh going into, yeah and like you said uh, you kind of learned that uh, patience really pays off and i'm really glad it happened in this preseason and you kind of have this new um yeah like good momentum going into the next season and i definitely found that to be the case with my qualifying because it took me because i had kind of uh, not been so competitive before this preseason started, but then I got into it and I uh, had to learn the qualifying. You know, I was really bad at qualifying at the start of it, mm-hmm. you know, the fuel burning bullshit and everything. So once I got that down, uh, there was a moment where I was like, oh, I need to have all of the fuel burned I possibly can before I start my final flyer. Uh, so you could get a little bit too focused on the carrot that you're chasing and forget that there's other, you know, that you don't necessarily have to, you know, be, um, on this optimal ideal sort of program during a qualifying. Mm -hmm. And once I once so what I'm getting at is that once I started realizing like, Oh, I can let these guys buy, I can go, I can adapt myself. I can go a little bit faster if I need to not burn in first gear all the time or, and just kind of be a little more chill. Even if I cross the line for my final flyer with like five or 10% more fuel than I wanted, it's still cool. I could still make something happen. It really doesn't. Um, it's not that big of a disadvantage going, you know, not having that bottom, you know, that's super low fuel. Totally. Then and the tires do get cold. It's like if you're burning all the way to the last corner, you're gonna find braking particularly difficult once you start the flying lap. Oh yeah, I found that. I've been caught out by that a couple times, and uh, yeah. But the one big moment for me in this preseason that made me feel like, ah, yes, ah, was uh, Nürburgring. (laughs) Even though I messed up uh, the first slot race that I did, uh, the 24-hour layout of Nürburgring, which uh, looks like won't be returning (laughs) for a manufacturer's series in the first stage at least, uh, that was really cool because I was able to nail qualifying and finally get like my highest qualifying starting position which is p3 in the first in the preseason of all preseason that was my highest fin- uh, starting position which was really cool yeah dude uh, nice thanks uh and then then the race happened and i didn't do too well in the first slot because i went off uh, when I was racing with Windfire, but the second, the third, I think, slot? Yeah. The third slot I did well. I think I finished, like, fourth. And you were in that race mm-hmm. as well. And it was fun. It's fun to be able to just kind of race again, uh, with, you, with you again. It's just, just great. Totally, dude. Um, I'm not looking forward to racing you, Group 2, because I'm going to get my ass handed to me. Group 2? Well, I might do some nation races. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll just do group two. Maybe I'll agree to that. I'll do group two races, especially if it's group two uh, map panorama. Hmm. It's uh, my favorite combo probably in the game. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I wonder how the NSX changed with these physics too. It must be uh, might be better. On on new tires, I'm sure it's great. on new tires <laughs> in practice mode. That's the other difference because these it's so funny now. The MR cars are really good in you know, free practice or. Uh, no tire wear mode but they just fall apart and to be honest they didn't fall apart like the audio was tragic but um other mrs i didn't i feel like people were you know uh hyping up this tragic tire wear on like the beetle and stuff but they did fine and the porsche i think it fared better and i've seemed like it was pretty handy i mean i think pre-update it would have dominated masuri a little more i think so yeah but now I feel like it's just kind of um, been brought back into the fold in certain tracks where it previously would have dominated. It's It was a car that 
had its advantage in that um, at turning you could chuck it in super hard and lean on the rear tire to uh, make a sharper radius than other cars were usually able to do. So you'd get like this early acceleration, big run down the straightaway, and that's how you would you know dominate even though its top speed's not that high. Um, but now uh, this tire and physics update has mandated a change in driving technique, so you can't chuck it in because the rear will just get melted and two laps in your softs will be gone. Instead you have to brake earlier, steer in earlier and smoother and uh, put the weight on the outside front uh, first um, and then introduce load to the rear about about mid-corner and um, then the rears can handle some load. But then it's like you get on the throttle and, and the 911's previous characteristic would be okay you can balance it on the throttle like it has a stiff sway bar and use the steering and throttle to just kind of uh, modulate how much oversteer you want. Now when you get on the throttle, if it's not already in a slide, it will refuse to kick out under power. So it's it's strange. It's very strange to adapt to. Yeah, and I noticed in uh, being behind you guys, coming out of uh, turn uh, three, the right-hander, mm -hmm. you guys would launch on me no matter what, whether it was new tires or worn tires. Uh, and I don't know if it was, it could have been driver error in a sense, um, but I was looking at the replay and I was like, no, the car is just better under acceleration. But that's, which was interesting to note because the Jag was really good under acceleration and previous to this update. And now it seems like it's just okay. Like mm -hmm. it kind of lost a little bit there, which is a shame, but it's still pretty good and uh, still has pretty good straight line speed and all that. Um, it's just it, where it did lose uh, kind of where it lost them out the most with the update was it seems like the high speed cornering is uh, a little bit worse mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. hmm. well um, do you think a BOP change is coming yeah that's the big speculation I've, the bop the bo it's almost bop it time I think <laughs> bop it twist it Turn it. Kill it. Kill it. Tires. Dead. <laughs> Always. No matter what I do. Melt it. Punt it. Send it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Melt it. Punt it. Zen it. I smell a title for the episode. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah. I think... Um, there's got to be something. There, yeah. There's got to be something. It, it's... Because if this, if this physics change were... I don't know. They've announced BOP stuff before. Well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm getting at. I just feel there's a trend of, you know, big update, and then, like, the next week there's a software update with a BOP change. There's uh, How many yeah. BOP changes were there last year? Like, two. Two or three, weren't there? Yeah, there were some, some surprising ones, I feel like. I, uh, I need to consult the GT Sport historian, but unfortunately he's uh, sleeping in a trash can right now. <laughs> Uh, but I, th I feel like there was one that was that happened between like the first season and the second or something that was like super shocking. I forget that. Could happen again though, folks. So don't you know? Don't just go and switching your uh, manufacturers without uh, considering that PD might be evil and <laughs> might I think might be expecting people to do that. I think you're right. It was somewhere around like April or May last year they made a BOP because I remember specifically the um, Viper was nerfed hugely. Um, mm -hmm. That thing. Oh yeah. Was and like that OP. made uh, and that's what made that one Viper guy like quit. That car, this something was introduced across all cars in that uh, update that uh, hasn't really gotten much discussion, but I've noticed it across all of them. Now, uh, if you're like below, I'm just arbitrarily picking a number, but say like 4,000 RPM, trying to come out of a corner like you would in the Viper. You'd keep it in third gear, use the torque of the V10 to get the car out. You get on the throttle and the car bucks. It bucks like it's trying to pick up driveline slack or that it's like uh, outside of optimum air fuel ratio, but it, it doesn't give you uh, a power that's corresponding to your throttle input. Instead, it gives you like a jagged power delivery until a certain RPM and then it smooths out. Uh, that, that particularly yeah. killed the Viper because then it's like, well, with a jagged power delivery, I can't consistently get out of a slow corner, and now I have to use like a lower gear, and the up change yeah. from second to third or whatever as I'm approaching the exit curve just kills the previous advantage of momentum I had. 
Um, and that's happening with like all cars. And, and what's interesting is that some cars have it happen at higher or lower RPMs than others, and it's um, inconsistent across the manufacturers. Uh, honestly surprised it hasn't gotten more discussion. Yeah, and I feel like that's a symptom of the whole uh, problem with the default tunes not being very good. And some tunes, to me, that the, that problem with the Viper sounds like it could be something to do with the uh, the differential, the LSD. Um, and it it's something that was okay before, but once the physics changed, you know, then suddenly it became a problem. And there's just like, I feel like even if, you know, people ask, oh, please, PD, let us, or uh, cha let us tune the let, either come up with new tunes or let like let the manufacturers tune their cars i think that even if you allowed only limited slip differential tuning that it would make a world of a difference for all these cars a lot i agree of i agree that would that would certainly be like having just one aspect unlocked for tuning um whatever it is would be great you know if it's like a rear wing or sway bar adjustment or as you suggest differential because differentials can wildly affect the way the car handles based on, you know, preload and yeah, ramp MC, angles and all that stuff. Mid corner, yeah. Um, and you could find a big advantage, uh, say like uh, corner entry with a, a loose diff that you'd then be compromised on the exit with a loose diff. But if you have a solid diff, then it's like you're going to have the nice stability, but the car's not going to want to turn in slow corners. It could be a interesting give and take. Um, I think I think that. It's a good point that you raise that um, that customizability would be maybe the best way for manufacturers if they're going to, you know, there's been talk of them um, supplying uh, personnel to uh, assist uh, the drivers with engineering and setting up their cars. It might be, it might be, in my opinion, too early of days to do that only because, like, we still have a game that doesn't even have tire pressures. So yeah. um, I imagine with the next iteration and the PS5 will probably have another step towards realism and maybe everything is going to be a bare minimum of you know industry standard simulation and at that time it's going to become extremely interesting um because uh, manufacturer involvement is only going to get bigger yeah i believe so and the i think that would be a, a really interesting headline for a lot of uh attention uh, positive attention to be brought to gt sports a serious kind of uh, racing platform because you can only imagine now imagine it's now but uh like autosport you know they've been covering esports they've been covering like i racing at gt sport events and so on um but imagine that kind of article headline where it's like uh ferrari sends some of its top engineers to tune the ferrari for the game you know for the fia series It'd be pretty cool that would be awesome just don't send me the race strategist We'll be <laughs> yeah keep that guy uh keep that guy loaded up on pasta no no don't go up don't go sport. fuel burning you don't need to you have a good time <laughs> stay in the pits no no you'll make it to q2 don't worry we await there's only two minutes left we wait yeah yeah the poor luck lurk <laughs> yeah my boy what have they done to my boy but yeah, I think it's a good compromise. Compromise mm -hmm. the uh, allowing just one section of tuning because a lot of people like I know Vin or Hellsfire hates tuning. Um, Lester also hates tuning. I'm kind of indifferent. I used to hate tuning. I used to be all about spec racing back in the day, like GT5 and stuff. But now I'm like. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's a little bit, though, not a lot. So if you were limiting it to certain things, whereas like just LSD tuning, just or even just aerodynamic balance, um, that would be. I think that would be very acceptable for those people that are even the most staunch opposition. Yeah, I would agree. Maybe I mean, like what you just suggested, aero tuning could be something that like you use the, you know, heads-up display menu. Uh, with the buttons on your wheel to request uh, oh, like plus one, plus two rear wing, but only at the pit stop. And it's going to add yeah. three seconds to the pit stop if you want to make that change. Maybe it's going to become worthwhile if PD make the uh, races longer, where um, you know using a hard tire versus medium tire over a 25-lap race instead of a 9-lap race, um, maybe at that time it would make sense to um, 
use those three seconds or whatever they may be, whatever penalty would come with that kind of a change to adjust the wings to better your tire wear and you make up those three seconds and then some on the next stint. Um, it would take a lot of uh, planning and uh, I have faith if something like that were to come out, PD would try to make it right at least. Uh, differentials would be great, dude, because that's something so... Um, that's something that real life racers can already adjust with uh, the many buttons of uh, their steering wheel and, and the knobs and such. Um, and, and we're already adjusting fuel map and brake bias, so why not diff as well? Um, and uh, you just go for the where you think an advantage could work, for better or for worse. Right. I, I would agree with that. That would be great. And I think it accomplishes a couple things when you limit it. Um, first of all, uh, one big thing is you have to make these things shareable. Because uh, as in the F1 games, they're, all of the tunes are very shareable and a lot, a lot of sharing goes on. Um, but there is still the danger of trick tunes that um, teams hang on to and don't share. Because if you have a lot of factors, a lot of different things you can change, then the higher likelihood there is of there being a trick tune an exploitative tune so if you have if you limit it to just uh, a limited slip differential for example then there's way less of a chance that there someone finds some crazy exploit and if you make it that uh if you make it so that so if you have some other kind of rule in place where if you want to use a tune in or an official race you have to share it that would also be cool yeah that would be, um, that would certainly be fair. And uh, that was something that was a bit of a obstacle um, when I ran leagues in R Factor, when it was basically like open tuning, um, Formula Sim Racing, for example. And uh, that's not to take any credit away from the exceptional drivers that were there. And there were tons, and you know, Bono Huis being one, David Greco, etc. Yeah. But um, those guys had teams with team managers willing to like stay awake for 36 hours at a time to um, find the setup exploit. Uh, uh, R factor was not perfect, and sometimes you could make kind of uh, impossible things happen between like uh, roll centers and um, uh, slip angles of tires, and um, it, it, the game didn't have tire sidewall oscillations. It, it, it was kind of a simple physics model even though it was relatively detailed. So uh, real-life concerns weren't a problem in, in that game, and so these teams were able to find exploits that would normally, if they were put onto a real-life car, would pop the tire or break a track right. rod or blow up the differential in half a lap or something like that. Uh, and uh, that that would be a concern if like full open setups were allowed in Gran Turismo, but if you... If we were to apply what you suggest and everyone is able to use everyone else's setup, then um, I think that could be very interesting. Um, we would probably be awash with way too many setups and finding the mm -hmm. ones that work. It, there, it would be in like a new layer of kind of obfuscation and ninja tactics of uh, maybe you could preload a setup. Or maybe you load a setup, and that's a setup that gets shared with everyone when you join an official server, but then you make like some last-second changes that makes a setup wildly different. Maybe during the warm-up, and maybe they discover an exploit that the server doesn't re-upload the, the setup changes you've just made, and now you've got a setup that's completely different to everyone else, but everyone else has loaded the setup that you started with thinking that they have the winning setup. Um, so a new universe would be kind of open with that, and hopefully not like a universe of complaints, because you know that with that sort of update there's always going to be an oversight in programming somewhere and that means that before a fix is implemented there's going to be weeks possibly yeah. or months of people exploiting that um before it gets fixed you know uh drivers wall riding or drivers uh using h shifter rather than paddles um you know and gaining a little bit of an acceleration advantage for example that's been fixed but that's you know a good comparison yeah and uh I think that's why it's, uh, yeah, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, for every reaction, there's an equal but opposite super frustrating reaction. And that's just what we're going to have to deal with. Because if you were to release even uh, the limited tuning for Gran Turismo Sport, and, and it's uh, just limited slip differential, and then uh, the good thing that it allows is that more manufacturers become more competitive, and then 
on the, on the side, one of the bad you know side effects may be there are a few guys get away with some crazy exploiting from the sh- exploiting the sharing system, which can happen. But yeah, mm-hmm. there's no, never, never, there's no such thing as a free lunch. You, you know, one thing that you fix, something else breaks. That's just the that's just the reality of video games and sport and all that. So for sure. But um, just to quickly cap off the tuning uh, rant that we've been on, which is cool. Uh, the one the one thing I think everyone should realize that especially people that are very anti-tuning, um, they kind of see GT Sport as a, uh, you know, like an oasis away from that stuff. But what you got to realize is uh, that the, when teams, like actual racing teams, look at sim racers, they're it's like yeah, it's great that we're having fun and doing all that, but they're seeing us as the ultimate robot testers. We're if you know much about F1 history, we're like the Gary Paffitts, the Pedro de la Rosas, the uh, Luca Badours. We're the guys that they want to pound lap after lap after lap, different testing setups. And that's one of the things that they uh, look for and appreciate the most in sim racers and drivers is how good you are at identifying, feeling, how sensitive you are to setup changes and identifying what works versus what doesn't. Mm-hmm. So, totally. you're going to have to get on that. You're going to have to get on that eventually. Hmm. It's, it'll be fun to find that out. Um, back in the day when I was doing more tunes outside of Gran Turismo, um, I would apply, you know, all my knowledge trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stiffen this and I'm going to take a couple clicks out of that. And I'm sure it's going to make it better because I've just played this through my mind and I'm sure. And I go out and I go slower and then I do the opposite change and now I've gone faster it's uh it's kind of funny how the mind will play tricks on you and um yeah. whomever can uh empirically uh finds uh the best progress uh will certainly rise to the top but um sure. equally so it's even with the best minds it's so easy to get it like one click off and then you just go down a rabbit hole of other changes trying to compensate yeah. for an error that you didn't realize you made well the other thing is that these setup changes they're they're not as like a lot of guys are scared of it because they think that oh if if a guy has some crazy setup he's gonna have oh that's the only reason that he's three seconds ahead of me but like what I'm talking about these guys pounding track pounding around tracks for in F1 simulators they're looking for fractions of a second they're look that's that's the margins that they're playing with it because that's all these optimized tunings can release to it's not like it's gonna some setup's gonna magically turn you into a better driver by two seconds or so it's it, it's i think the average if you hit your ultimate pace with, without a setup then the best i think that you can do at a track like that's a two minute lap is like maybe you'll gain one second and that's kind of that that would be like really that would be some crazy tuning to do, but most of the time you can only really gain like half a second. And sometimes it, the case is that you don't have confidence in the car, and so you are slower because you just don't like driving it. But then um, you could drive around it, but a setup change helps you get to that ultimate potential faster. I think it sounds like what you're saying is the the setup change. It's um, it it's really dependent on the kind of the cohesive relationship between the driver and the car and it's it's half what the car wants and half what the driver wants yeah exactly well said Hmm. yeah don't be scared of setups anyway (laughs) that's the main thing they're uh it's not that but it's not that big a deal it's fun it can be fun but once every once in a while it gets crazy like i hate tuning transmissions to be honest but yeah (laughs) that's about it um so, going on to some GT Sports speculation for updates and stuff. We had the calendar drop on us for the upcoming Stage 1 of Manufacturers Series and the continued Nations Cup 40-round yeah. 40, 40 uh, 40 extravaganza. Let me, let me pull that up. I haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, so the, the main takeaway we got was there are four or three slots, three rounds, rather, that are to be announced. They're blanks, and... People have been speculating. Uh, people have pulled up leaked images from a Gran Turismo Sport like behind-the-scenes tour, and that included a like 3D model of Silverstone. Mm-hmm. And Silverstone has four layouts: it has Silverstone International, which is like where the new paddock is. It's like I guess you can consider that the south or the east. 
side, and then there's National, which has the old paddock, the old F1 where they used to start the race from, mm -hmm. and then you have the big GP circuit, and then you have Stowe, which is a small infield circuit on the International side. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so what we're speculating on is if you take out your schedules there, you can find them on the Gran Turismo Sport or Gran Turismo.com website. In the, under the sports section, sport mode section in the manufacturer series, and you go to the calendar or schedule, the coming schedule. Uh, round five is the one that doesn't have a. Uh, now, it doesn't have a track there at all. Uh, and one thing that Hellsfire point, pointed out is so uh, PD likes to always kind of have their. They, have, they like to have a race. Uh, at a if an F1 track is if a race in F1 is happening around the same time, they will try to match it up to a uh, British, FIA round. British Grand Prix. That's what you're so saying. So the British, British Grand Prix is happening July around July 14th, I think, on the 14th, which is a Sunday. Okay. And and Nations that race on that Saturday is a to be announced track. So we're, we're there's some good you know, wait behind the idea that that round is going to be like Super Formula mm -hmm. or Formula One at Silverstone, which will be really fun. Mm -hmm. In manufacturer's side, it's round five. It's going to be a group four race. So we're thinking that could be like the national layout or the international layout. Uh, and then you have round seven in manufacturer also being to be announced, which is going to be a group three race. And it may be the full GP circuit. Um, I think we have a number of laps for that one, so I'm not sure. But, yeah, then it goes on and on. And then the final race, top 16 superstars race for stage one. This is going to be the final round, the 10th round, which is a change. And that's also to be announced. So maybe that one will be the full GP circuit. Mm -hmm. hmm. Eddie, have you uh, raced Silverstone on any sim uh, that oh, yeah. had um, Bridge and Priori Corny? Oh, yes. I raced it in R Factor, um, even the old uh, F1 Championship Edition game on the PlayStation Three. <laughs> so good. Uh, what else? Have, yeah, I love. I miss that layout. Have you Have you raced the old layout, like the 1979 version? Oh yeah, yeah. I think uh, R Factor Two has that. Incredible. Layout. I remember correctly. A set of course, I think I've downloaded it for Project Cars. Maybe I don't know. One of those, but yeah. The old old layout's crazy. It's a hay bells hair. It feels very much like an airport mm -hmm. runway. Well, uh, if that's the case, it sounds like uh, everyone's um, most wanted track, Spa, is uh, still under wraps. True. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, kind of bittersweet because Silverstone's an awesome circuit, and I, it's just it's interesting because I've really been missing it lately. Uh, I was watching Lewis Hamilton on David Letterman's show on Netflix, which I highly recommend. Super great show, and they did an awesome job of covering Hamilton's story. And they were, you know, they showed Silverstone. And uh, also, uh, one thing I want to mention, give I want to give big props to my friend Pedro Loco McQueen. You know, uh, he has uh, gone over for the esports and cars training kind of camp. He was in Silverstone, and he, I've been, you know, super jealous looking at the pictures that he's had, and also nostalgic from GT Academy days being at Silverstone in England and all that. And ever that was like two weeks ago. He's he he went over there, and ever since then I've just been thinking about Silverstone a lot. And then this news happened, and I'm like, yes, perfect. That's cool. Hey, when you were over there, did you meet Jeff Zwart? Wasn't he like the video yeah. producer? Yeah, yeah, he was the director. Zwart, yeah. And you and you ended up you know him, right? I've met him. He's uh, he's like a local Porsche legend in Northern California, and uh, I think his house is like somewhere between you know. Um, uh, the Bay Area and the coast of North Bay. Uh, I want to say it's like Petaluma or something like that. But anyway, he's oh, got nice. like his own rally cross track and uh, takes like his Safari 911 out there every once in a while. Uh, when there's like a cars and coffee with the Porsche Club, uh, he'll often take one of his uh, collections out there, like the Safari 911, just throw plates on it. He's got the huge knobbly tires like he's fresh off a of Dakar. Uh, the, the, guy's, oh, wow. and the guy's super affable. He's like, he'll talk to anyone. Um, he's, he seems like an awesome guy. Was he, so he was the director of like the show. Did he have, was he having say in like, uh, 
the chosen cars and tracks and challenges, or was it that he was just there with a the video crew and, and kind of his his task was documenting it? Yeah, I mean, he was the boss of the whole production, really. Um, he was the director of the show. He had he was telling us how to stand, like directing the cameras around and all that. Mm -hmm. And he was talking to the dudes. We had like a, a orientation in San Diego. And he was kind of breaking down some stuff, and he was really cool, you know, very approachable, but very serious as well. Uh, yeah, fun character to be around. That's cool, dude. Yeah, and so bringing back Silverstone, I mean, it's been, it's kind of surprising it's not already in sport, but yeah, that that's a track that I'm going to take to very... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be very excited to get going on that one. I might not stop lapping it for a while. <laughs> That's good, dude. Well, Silverstone, uh, maybe Spa, and we just got Goodwood. Have you driven that Goodwood, yet? Goodwood, yeah. have to cover that. I actually haven't, <laughs> haven't had time to check it out yet, but uh, I love Goodwood Revival. If you haven't seen it, they have a great YouTube channel. And they do it every year. They do live streams and stuff. So then it's, it's like one of the greatest celebrations of cars uh in the world and their focus is vintage racing and uh restoration you know where whereas something like SEMA, which is also like almost equally as cool uh their thing is more about modification and such so mm -hmm. um yeah goodwood's badass and the revival circuit is very like old school so i, I imagine it's a uh, it's got to feel pretty pretty cool running around in a on a flat track like that that's just has so much history in it totally it's you know a simple simple track and it's got a very particular line i'm sure it's going to develop some good races but um what i'm particularly thankful for because i take so many photos is it's got uh like four different dusk and dawn nighttime uh settings so wow. uh like the sky just looks amazing it's like hero lighting and i love that kind of stuff so uh, I hope that one of these blanks um, on the calendar of manufacturer or nations might be Goodwood. Uh, oh, yeah, it, true. It'll make be. for some great photographs. Yeah, you can do Goodwood there, I would imagine. And then for nations, maybe like a, a vintage race. That <laughs> Remember that one nations race last year that no one could afford, so it was like the low, most lowly contested race? Yeah, I think everyone had to own that one alpha from, I yeah. forget what it was. At like P sixty six B or whatever it's called, right? So maybe not. Maybe they learn from that mistake. Maybe they'll they'll pick a better car, but um, or leave it a little more open mm -hmm. somehow. But that would be fun. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Um, it's better than a Blue Moon Bay uh, oval. Yeah. Uh, what are they thinking? <sighs> Is it? It was it like the employee of the week and the employee that made Blue Moon Bay got to pick right? a race or something? It's like, come on, you guys. What? Why? Why are we dri right, driving this track? fire that intern yeah at least make it you know comfort hards in make it bumper cars you know make it like somewhat interesting right well we can look at some positives though for the coming schedule uh one of them being no more soft tires it seems mm -hmm. in the race which is great uh less tire wear to worry about uh more pushing and the also as a compliment, the actual tire wear rates for the races has have gone down considerably, which is great. For sure. I think a lot of people were really turned off to the idea of having to save so much. I mean like F one twenty twelve style. How was your um, how was your tire wear yesterday in the last round with the Jag? Well and the Jag is pretty good because it's very um very evenly spread so uh the fronts still wear more than the rears especially if you don't take care of them a little bit mm -hmm. but yeah very manageable I, I didn't compare it yet uh, to the other cars i'm not sure if the jag has a, an advantage there a little bit but i would say it does in the sense of it being more spread uh, even but i don't know if it's the case that it's uh, less wear overall mm -hmm. How was yours? <laughs> Pretty awful. <laughs> yeah. You know. So you, uh, Lester and you, yourself were fucking, yeah, you guys were sliding around that last sector, last, uh, last lap. Yes. The, uh, the rear tire wear is like one, 
one and a half to two times the wear of the fronts, depending on driving style, at least in the first, let's say, 10, 20 practice laps after the update dropped, uh, it was twice that of the fronts for me. And once I was able to kind of figure out, wrap my head around what the update wanted me to do in terms of driving style, then the tire wear reduced, but it was still um, leveraged towards more rear tire wear, and it seemed like one big slide and your stint is going to be ruined. Um, that's how quickly they would wear in the cars kicking sideways. So it, right. it's, uh, it took really careful driving to maximize. And yeah, by the last half of the last lap, like we were both just slip sliding around because the rear tires were, once they get below, you know, what, one third remaining tread life, they just melt off. Yeah. Yeah, and that brings up the, the well, we can go from there into, um, because you're frustrated with the Porsche, uh, a Porsche, or whatever, if, and other people <laughs> are also. I appreciate the extra syllable. <laughs> well, yeah, the P car uh, is really taking a hit with this update. Um, we already talked about a potential BLP update that may ratify that a little bit, but there is still a big uh, question mark that's come into into play for this season, and that is the super unexpected. Uh, announcement that we can still uh, choose a different manufacturer even though we were led on to believe that once you picked for preseason once you picked your manufacturer we thought that you would have it for the whole year but now they've gone ahead and changed that and i think it's because they knew there was going to be a shit storm once they dropped this new uh update on us yep so i think <laughs> everyone should pay attention to who uh who is Riding with what? And uh, if you haven't, if you're listening in Asia, by the way, please pick Jaguar. Mm -hmm. We need more Jaguar drivers over there. But uh, I'm sticking with Jaguar. Uh, what about you? I'm probably going to stay with Porsche. Um, just too much of a personal affinity. But yeah. um, I'm not going to choose for sure until maybe like the day before the the next the first race of the next season in case there's going to be a BOP change update because that's happened before and if there is then there's going to be a, a you know a huge flurry of test laps late in the night after the update drops and try and figure out you know if it's if it's been nerfed hugely then I'll have to go with something else uh, if it hasn't though then I can choose it but you know I just don't want to um uh, what's a good euphemism um, don't want to go for a long distance road trip until the fuel tank is full or something like that. That was a terrible euphemism. So <laughs> it, I haven't even considered other, other manufacturers. It's really going to depend on if there's a BOP change or not. Um, and the car wasn't, yeah. wasn't too bad at this, uh, Lago Maggiore. I mean, in the first round when he was, when he was a uh, deaf son and wind fire in front of me, I qualified third and I finished third. Or qualified fourth, I think. I think Daniel was in front of me, um, but I I couldn't catch those guys. Uh, I I am I am hesitant to blame the physics change for me not being able to catch them and to say it's a nerf on the Porsche because we've all had to adapt our our driving styles accordingly because it's like every car just feels wildly different. Um, I think it's likelier that those guys were just simply better than I. Um, because they've been on, uh, Windfire and Defsun in particular have been like on an unbeatable streak. Um, so, yeah, um, likely I'll stay with Porsche. Uh, we'll see. Time will tell. Another big consideration is we still haven't had a Group 4 race. So, I think the Group 4 car that came in is still going to be pretty strong. Yeah, pretty likely. So... There's always that, because every once in a while I, I fall into that mental trap where I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot. I start thinking like that the manufacturer series is Group 3 only. I, I, I act treat it like that in my head, but then I'm like, oh no, there's a whole other half to this series, and it's Group 4. You have to remember that. I mean, and, I mean, you could put it this way. You could even only do Group 4 races if you wanted to, and still probably do super well you know mm -hmm. i have a feeling that's one go ahead go ahead go ahead i was just saying well that's one of the advantages of the, this style of championship yeah i have a feeling the cayman's going to be amazing if if tire wear 
has been increased for mid-engine rear-wheel drive cars. The Cayman was typically wearing out its front tires first, even though it handles similarly to the 911 with, you know, the ridiculous amount of camber and toe on the rear so that you chuck it in and you can count on the rear gripping at the, but simultaneously allowing you a big, um, you know, rotational radius. And then that, that pliability is probably going to remain and maybe the tire wear is going to be even. Um, but that's all just purely hypothetical. I, I have not done any testing and in light of this, this discussion should probably test that thing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something, I think it'll be a pleasant surprise. Uh, I haven't even tried the Group 4 Jaguar yet. Don't know how that's one, that one's going to do. But I am looking forward to the Group 4 races in the first stage of the manufacturer series being more uh, fast. Because mm-hmm. that car, it, it does well on tracks like Monza and stuff. It has seven gears. Wow. 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 Spancy. All seven. <laughs> Hey, dude, so yep. do you know anything about um, we got uh, the next uh, world tour is going to be New York City. Um, has it been mm-hmm. announced uh, where that's going to be in particular? Is it going to be like Madison Square Gardens or something? Well, they have used, I think they used the old MTV studios before. There's a precedent there. Um, and when I say they, I mean uh, Grand Tr- uh, GT Academy. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where it was. We, should, we could ask Rich. Look out for Rich Castro on a future episode of the Gran Turismo Burroughs Prod podcast. Mm-hmm. We are going to... Um, Is he going to be Peach or Toad? Yeah, that's, that's a big question. We really have to deliver or Bowser. That, you know? we got to have a Bowser on at some point. That's true. He'd be a really good Bowser. He has some some, some big clenchers on him. So. <laughs> or we could invite... Uh, let's get Zenit on. You know, let's I would love to have let, let's on. get you know the arch nemesis into the the lion's den and let's see if he can play ball. Uh, I bet he could. I have a feeling that guy can and can probably lob you know the insults back and forth. We'll have a little friendly game of uh, of ping pong jibes. Well, I'm I'm a black belt in verbal um, uh, for verbal tai chi, so. You better watch out. Black belt in verbal Tai Chi. Tai Chi is for relaxation, not self-defense. You know that, right? What? <laughs> You're right. I can talk them down like no other. Though. Excellent. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're just looking forward to that. We're going to have more and more people joining us for the podcast uh, in the future episodes, which will be fun. But um, why did I bring him up? <laughs> what were we just talking about? Uh, Rich. We were talking about Rich and Bowser and... Right. What was before? Right before. That? Uh, something about. The, the, I'm guessing. I, I think it was related to Gran Turismo, but don't, oh, yeah, don't no, take yeah. my word on he, that. Yeah. Oh, I think you're right. You know what? And it was New York. Um, he went to. He was on GC Academy in 14. I forget which year. Uh, they went to New York in that year, and Monticello racetrack, which is cool, mm-hmm. and they had their. Um, nerd off the 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 actual driving portion was in monticello and that and the racing uh gran turismo section was in new york's uh, mtv studios the old ones the ones where like tr total request live happen uh if you don't know that what that is stop listening to the show it's only for older gentlemen <laughs> i don't know what you're doing listening to us old guys just just kidding but so that's the studio have that's like overlooking Times square isn't it yeah, I think it's like a space that's pretty easy to rent out these days, and they, it's a mixed-use kind of space. Gotcha. So they might do it there. I don't know. Interesting. Well, that'd be cool. You know, maybe. Or they might have them all race out in the open in Times Square and get shit thrown at them. You never know. It's quite possible. All I know is that they'll probably have, if uh, you know, if we go by the pattern that's been set previously, they'll they'll be picked up in some cool cars. Gran Turismo used to have a New York City layout. I wonder oh, yeah, if, uh, if there's a chance it might return. Oh, my God. You're making me so anxious because I would love a city circuit, true city circuit like that. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, New York should be really fun to see. There's going to be a lot of interesting guys there and such. So we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you about uh, manufacturer change. So um, we found out what la- late last night that uh, we can change manufacturer for this next season. Uh, this last season was quote unquote the preseason. And so what I'm wondering is we've got this season to determine who goes to Austria, I think. And then the season yeah. following that to determine who goes to Tokyo. 
And then the winners yes. of New York City, Austria, and Tokyo uh, go to the World Tour, along with um, the Paris. W weren't there qualifiers in Paris? Aren't a few of those guys going to the World Final? Uh, I believe so. We've covered this in the previous episode, but it was so uh, it was a while ago. Yes. <laughs> or not the previous. Was it the previous? Yes, it was. I think so. It was in March, yeah. and I kind of forgot, but I think it's something like that, yes. Okay. Well, uh, I, have... I wonder if we're going to be able to change manufacturer uh, between this next season and the Tokyo season. And because it's because the last one's called preseason, and this is now official season, I have a hunch it, it would be wise to consider the possibility, all of you listening, you know, all, whoever many of you are, um, that it, it's possible you'll have to consider there's not going to be another change and this is going to be it and you'll be locked in for the rest of the year. Right. Yeah, uh, we're recording this in June, on June 2nd, 2019. So just to give you context there. But yeah, um, that might be the case. Uh, there's just, it's, it's, imp it's unpredictable and it's kind of a shame, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. You just don't know what's going to hit you when it comes to making alliances and putting your roots down in, in these Grand Turismo events. So stay on your toes. That's all we can say. For sure. Oh, yes. Mm. But, uh, yeah, Germany's coming up soon. That's going to be on the German World Tour at Nuremberg Rings, June 21st, right around the corner. That's going to be happening during the round seven. Oh, June, round eight, yeah. June 21st or July 21st? June this month, yeah. Well, that's not round eight. That'd be like round three. For manufacturer, it's round eight. Oh, sorry, round four. There we go. Wait, they're skipping a week. Yeah. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, the I'm so lucky. Um, Gran Turismo have married. nothing scheduled uh, for the two weeks surrounding my wedding. Um, thank Beautiful. you, thank you guys so much. Just thank you. <laughs> really appreciate the bone bone time. I thought this was PG-13. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, dog bones, you know? Uh, cause you're, yes. You're that fake dog. That you Minecraft. Know. You know, you <laughs> kill an archer skeleton, you get a couple of bones. Exactly. Uh, but, yeah, I just realized that. Wow, there's a big gap between uh, June. <laughs> numbers. Are you still laughing about bones? <laughs> Maybe. Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> round two is on... The Wednesday, June twelfth. Then round three is the fifteenth, and then there's nothing until July sixth. Yeah, two weeks. Great. So I'm gonna miss the first round on the eighth this weekend. I'm gonna be somewhere else. Then I'm gonna be able to do round two and three, I think. Hmm. Good. And then. I'm actually going. I'm doing. I'm going to a wedding. My my uncle and aunt are getting married on the same weekend as you. It's interesting. So I'm going to that wedding. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. It was a tough choice. Nah. <laughs> well, you're going to be up here soon for uh, IndyCar at Laguna Seca, right? Yes, I am. There's no way I'm going to miss that. So, and I know you may be off in a way, but we'll see how we we'll see how everything settles when it comes down at that time. We'll find a way. We'll we'll at least you know have dinner together. The world the yeah, worlds will collide again. Yes, and I do have my cousins up there too. Sorry, this is a very personal conversation. I just just wanted to make you guys jealous. I'm going to go see uh, Indy Cars racing in Laguna Seca. More than that, you get to hang out with Road Beef. And I get to hang out with Road Beef and his wife. Get get on my level. Yeah, guys. Jeez. <laughs> if you want to hang out yeah, with me, it. let me win every race. You see me in your mirrors, just let me pass, and I'll invite you to my next wedding. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a great note to end on very positive very modern not at all manipulative <laughs> <laughs> that was fun plenty of stuff that we needed to cover uh it's been a little while since our last podcast but we will be coming at you with another one very soon and thanks again to anyone and everyone that is listening to us we really really appreciate you guys being in on this Absolutely. and supporting so spread it around and let's uh 
get together if you have any ideas for the podcast or any feedback please do let us either of us know we're on all the social medias for sure and all of that and whatsapp as well i will be paying attention Uh, any kind of feedback uh tristan you sound like an idiot i'll listen to it and i'll try to adjust so uh yeah thank you everyone for listening and and uh We'll probably be back. I'm, I'm going to guess maybe you and I can do something around the Nürburgring World Tour. Maybe we'll have like a reaction cast yeah. or something like that. Yeah, either a reaction cast or a simulcast. You never know. It all depends on the schedule and all that. But we would love to get something like that going and have live stream, um, special stuff, have people in the chat. It would be really fun. Totally. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Eddie, for hosting this and for having me. Thank you. Likewise, I've been Wardez. And I've been Road Beef. Goodbye. Peace.